All right, so why are we here, right? Unplanned downtime has been solved for, for a long time. You guys have all been doing clustering in your environments. You have redundant hardware, whether it's a mainframe or something else. Everyone's been focused on it, right? No one's dealing with planned downtime as far as we can tell. We don't see any competitors um, in this space right now. Um, the pain points we hear from our customers are, you know, I have to patch once a month. I have to go down once a quarter. I'm going down for things like security patching. I'm going down for things that I don't care about. I don't want to do a database upgrade. I have to do a database upgrade. I have to go to the business and ask for that. And then when the business comes to me and asks for new functionality that requires an SAP upgrade, this is my fifth, 10th, 15th outage of the year. And they don't like that conversation. The planning around it is difficult. I'm working on the weekends. My teams are exhausted. Um, just trying to work around what the business can even offer us in the first place. Those negotiations, those, those conversations sometimes take a quarter to even iron out when we can do it, right? We're solving for that problem, right? And the other thing is, you know, when you do, when I look at some of the more complex upgrades that clients do, it's like open heart surgery. They're taking the system that's running, they bring it down and they start changing layers of it. And often multiple teams have to be involved and hand off between each other and pass the ball. I mean, it's often humans with, on a keyboard doing things that is prone to error. And what we, you know, as much as, you know, this, that we're eliminating the plan downtime, we're, you know, guaranteeing the success, the successful outcome of that, of that activity, that operational activity, which is again, something which is, is different. It's, we're focusing more on the cost of plan downtime here, but the, the ability for a planned change to turn into an unplanned event is real. You know, I used to work for a big financial services firm and I had of operations, whenever we had an issue said, what was the last change that was rolled out on this platform? When do we, you know, let's look at the change history here because someone changed something, you know, and it's, it's the number one cause of issues. So planned can very quickly become unplanned, right. unscheduled, which again, our approach mitigates that. Sorry, Chris. No, I absolutely. can't help myself. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so we were looking for numbers, right? Because we know this is a real problem in our clients. And there's not a lot of good statistics out there. I'll be honest with you. I've searched. Um, this is one set of numbers that I found. $7,000 a minute. That's about a half mil an hour um, from four. So this is a general IT outage um, for this data. I can't find anything specific in SAP. I, I, I can't wait until we start this conversation with the likes of Forrester and whatnot with what we're doing to start getting these kinds of measurements from the SAP field, because we see a lot higher numbers than this. So what does MD do, MDO do? What, what use cases do we address? Patching OS, patching database, upgrading the database. Uh, we also take care of uh, kernel changes in SAP. So all of those kind of routine maintenance um, type of options when it comes to patching that you would do in a basis environment. We can also scale. So maybe it's Thanksgiving and your retail operations are gonna, are gonna kick up or kick down and you need to scale your operations online. You don't wanna take the outage. Um, our automation also makes that quite simple to do in an online way without a lot of planning, right? You just, we just need to know what your target is. Our automation knows how to build that builds it, does a live kickover of your users, scale up, scale down, scale out. Uh, cloning and refresh. Um, this is a use case that we have some customers that have issues with as far as downtime, um, some, some don't, um, but it's another use case. Of course, we are, we're migrators, we know how to build SAP systems. We can of course clone and refresh your systems online extremely fast. Biggest use case for that is uh, large environments where a lot of development projects are going on, a lot of sandboxing, um, you want to use those systems very fast with the latest data. Maybe you want to scale that every single day. Our automation can give you a copy of production every single day. Um, and then compliance. Uh, Tim was alluding to this, to this earlier, right? With our uh, immutable infrastructure, um, with the things that, that we're doing around building this, it, it can eliminate issues around ransomware because you're not pulling that technical debt forward. You're not pulling human error into your system. You don't have to trust that your folks are going to do this right because it's a repeatable piece of code that we've run a hundred times in your environment already, you know how it's going to come out on the yeah. back end before you push the button. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times we, we present this, this approach, this automation framework, and the clients are the ones thinking about the use case. So a large insurance firm, you know, their challenge was they have to be able to prove 
from a compliance perspective that they you know, have to be able to read the build the environments very frequently, like from complete scratch. Um, and if they don't, they have to fill in a lot of paperwork from their compliance and audit team. So for them, you know, the ability, and that was really around mitigating ransomware, right? So the ability for them to be able to build an environment clean using, you know, base images from operating system, SAP, means the chances of one, you know, ransomware infiltrating that if you're building it frequently is significantly reduced. And it just saved the technology team a very significant burden from kind of answering the, the questions for the, you know, the compliance and security folks. Um, so there's multiple reasons to do this. We're picking on plan downtime as, as the key one, but you know, a lot of clients are interpreting, oh, I can, I can solve this problem. I, can, I don't need a training environment because I've got a new initiative coming up. Oh, I can use this technology to spin up a new training platform. Um, so we have a customer in the room that asked, I don't just refresh my S4, my ECC environment. I, I refresh everything that goes on around that for, for my testing regression cycle once every three weeks. Um, how does this tool handle that? So we're releasing the cape, the functionality in patterns, effectively. So you know we focused on S4, we focused on ECC. You know we have, and as we as we work with clients like like yourself, we would then look at those additional components. And there's nothing really stopping this largely. I mean there are there are some there are some technical challenges. For instance, if you have let's just say an Oracle database for want of a better term, failing over to that without any outage at all. There would have to be a QS of, a QS of the database, effectively. But what we're doing is we're solving it pattern by pattern. Um, so we've got you know half a dozen patterns done, and as we as as this is adopted by clients, we look at their patterns and we start to build them. So EWM is a common one. We're seeing requests for that. We're working on that with another client at the moment, for instance. So um, so we'd work with we'd work with you guys, the customers, and then to start solving it. It wouldn't you know we're not claiming to have it fixed overnight. This is a new offering from us, but as we mature and we work with the client, we will then package more and more of their components, including potentially non-SAP items. Because ultimately what we're doing here is state management. So if we can deploy and understand the state of the application using our orchestration model, which is, is very rich and allows us to um, tailor it for a given client, as long as we can get those, that configuration state information into our object model, we can we can we can look at this. There's, there's no reason. The only thing we have to be careful of is guaranteeing zero downtime. But it could be instead of like patching an Oracle system, which takes I don't know, let's say eight hours, that could be a few minutes to to do the cut to, to do the cut over. Whereas Hana, at the moment, that's that's that, that would be zero, right? Based on the way the HSR works and Hana works. Great question. So let's get interactive a little bit. I have a few customers in the room here. I showed the $7,000 a minute number, half million, half million an hour. Right? We talked a little bit about the use cases, what's, what's causing that. Does that number ring true to you? Does that sound low? Does it, does it sound high? We, just raise your hand if, if you think that number's low. I think it's low. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we, we're, we're talking to our customers. We're doing the business case around this. Um, this is one large uh, telecommunications customer that we have. Um, we looked back a year, quarter by quarter, what are their planned downtimes? What are they doing with the business today? Um, Q1, got eight hours, kernel upgrade, Honor revision upgrade, had to get done. 15 hours in Q2, OS, app servers, need to get patched. Um, Q3, SAP upgrade occurred, 48 hours, that was a big one. Q4, go back to the business again, fourth outage of the year uh, for more OS patching and, and DBs. All right, so this is typical customer. Um, a lot of customers are running quarterly cycles like this. We asked them for their number internally, sat down with them, looked at it, thought about it, um, came up with a number of $33 million a year. That, that's what, what 81 hours of outage cost their business to be down. Um, and that's just hard cost, right? That's not thinking about the time to plan for those eight hours to be efficient, right? The time to bring those IT personnel in on the weekend and make that happen around the business to negotiate that downtime. All the pieces that, that you have to do because you're limited to this one window and you have to make it right and you, you have to make it successful. Uh, 33 million. MDO, we can eliminate three of those four quarters. Um, take them, all the way down to zero, all right? 
Couldn't take the big, the big poll in the tent on this one for SAP release upgrades, major release upgrades. We're not there yet. I'm working on it. It's well, well, well out in our horizon for sure. Um, but we can take care of the rest of that for that company. So now we have to go to the business one time for the year, right? Probably for something the business wants in the first place, which is why we're doing the, the SAP release. But I don't have to go for the, the technical patching. I don't have to go for the kernel updates that are solving incidents or whatever it is that we're, that we're dealing with. Um, to, to initiate that kind of a change. Um, that customer, very clear $13 million savings in hard costs for downtime for the business. It's a really easy business case um, that this makes sense to put a little bit of effort into and operate. Oh, by the way, because it's easier, I can do it more often. I don't have to go to the business for that outage, at least not like I did in the past. So if I need to patch a little bit more often, stay a little bit more current to deal with something, I don't have to push it out three months, six months, uh, whatever that is. Um, but very real savings, very easy business case. Um, and again, I think we're the only people that are solving for this. Um, I, I've, been in, I've been in the basis shoes. I've been in the, the CIO shoes of, of, of needing this downtime. It's a constant battle. And I think this is a game changer to be able to say, I don't have to ask the business for downtime throughout the year multiple times. 